everyone, welcome to the YouTube live tech tutorial. So we're gonna go a little behind the scenes and I did upload a workbook for you. So it is below, hopefully it's below. I literally just uploaded it. Um, I thought I had done it already, but I had not. It's just been one of those weeks. So actually it's been one of those months. I don't even know what's going on. All right, yes, the link is there. So it is a free workbook. So today instead of slides, we're just gonna kind of follow along and go through it because I put a lot of information in the workbook uh, versus just having them on the slide. So you just want to take some quick notes on things that you might like. All right, I am going to share my screen with you. And if you're new here, I am just doing live webinars every Tuesday on just fun topics that I thought would be useful. They do not, just to be clear, they do not lead into a sale. They're what, I don't even know if anyone else does this. They're just called no sale webinars where just sharing some things I know that I think will be helpful to you in just making more money in general, or it's just something fun you want to try out. So if you have been thinking about starting a YouTube channel or just adding it as another component to your business, uh, hopefully this is something that you might think about. I mean, it takes a while, just so you know, I thought about doing a YouTube channel for years. <laughs> and so I wasn't able to do it just because I did. I worked in human resources and it's kind of like you're the librarian of corporate America, so you should be seen as above the law. I wasn't even on social media, I think, back then. Or if I posted things, it was like super PG. Um, actually, I still post super PG things. But uh, I think, you know, back then it was like extra ultra scared or if anything, like if we were out at a club or something, I'd be like, do not tag me <laughs> to my friends. And Instagram wasn't even around then. I'm, so that was like pre-Instagram. So it was just Facebook you were worried about. Anyways, hello, Tammy. Yes, got the workbook. Awesome. Darlene, it's there. Thank you, guys. Uh, Vanessa, the gym swag shop. That's a really good name. We'll talk about that, too. It's a great way to just kind of market yourself. Hi, awesome. Darlene, appreciate the information. Vanessa, sweet. Yes, it's been on my list for years, too. Yeah, so don't worry, like, if you need to do it, uh, if you're, like, too late. I was telling my friend the other day, there's... Um, what is that guy? Can't remember his name. Um, anyways, he was so funny. I saw him at a book signing that he had here in San Diego. This like five years ago. And he was talking about podcasts because he has a very successful podcast. He's in LA. So he gets access to lots of celebrities that come through. And he, someone asked him about starting a podcast channel. And he's like, yeah, it's too late for you. It's too late for everybody. <laughs> he's like, I started my podcast a long time ago, and that's why it's so successful. There's no reason for you to start one now. You're not going to be successful. <laughs> and I just thought that was like such a depressing message. I don't think that's true. I mean, honestly, I think podcasts are like more boring than watching grass grow. But I think if you, there's plenty of people that are going into podcasting right now and doing very well. So you can start YouTube whenever you want. Don't get freaked out that there are other people there that have more views or more subs or anything else. Anytime you want to do something, there's more competition. I mean, it's like I write books and people have been writing books for literally thousands of years and it's not too late to just start writing a book. So that's my pep talk for you. Don't worry about timing. You start your YouTube channel whenever you feel like it and when it's good for you and you are comfortable with doing it. So, all right, so let's just go through the workbook. Let me try to share my workbook so you can follow along and hopefully you can see it. All right, so let's just go over here. So in this workbook, this is number two of two. So you already had one from last week. So just for the camera, just so you know, I started out with my iMac. You don't have to get anything fancy. You could use your phone. Honestly, the reason I started out with the iMac instead of my phone is because it was easier to transfer the files. Like, I know it sounds silly. I could not for the life of me figure out how to get a file from my phone onto my computer. And this is what I didn't have an iPhone. I had an Android back then. And iPhone uh, or your iMac at the time had, I could do, I could record videos with, um, what is it called? The photo booth? Is it photo booth? It's built into the Mac. I can't find it right now because I'm looking for it, of course. Um, but it already will take pictures for you and it will do video. So I was able to just sit there in front of my computer, hit the record button, push stop. I would do everything perfect in one take. And if it didn't turn out perfect, I would just delete it because I didn't know how to edit videos. I didn't understand video editing software. It looked really intimidating. So 
you could just start out with your Mac or whatever program is already built in to use your webcam. You could even use, I know everyone is using Zoom right now. You could use Zoom to just record a one person Zoom call and do it that way. So, you know, when you look at some of my older videos, if anyone is in the original Planner 101, you'll see it's just me sitting there in front of my computer. The camera's not that great and the sound probably is like mediocre, but it worked and I got videos out. So, you know, if you're not really sure if YouTube is for you or you're just on a budget right now, you can still like there are videos out there that have millions of views that have been recorded on a camera, um, a phone, a what are those things called? Uh, that thing you wear on your head. I can't a GoPro. So you can do anything you want. Now, a vlogging camera, just to be clear, a vlogging camera, the reason they call them vlogging cameras is because they're lighter. So you can carry them around while you're going out and about. Obviously, I think you guys remember I sold all of my vlogging camera equipment, uh, I think a couple months ago, because clearly I'm not, I don't actually enjoy vlogging, but I tried it for a while. And also there's really nowhere to go. So you're just gonna watch me vlog around. We're in my living room now. Hey, we're in my kitchen. Hey, we're outside at the front door, right? Like people aren't really traveling right now. So I had so, sold all of my vlogging equipment, but that's the only point of getting those cameras and you can use those at home to record with they're a little less expensive i think they're maybe you're somewhere around two or three hundred dollars and then when you really want to invest you can get a dslr now a dslr um again this is kind of funny it just sat in my closet um and it just it literally did nothing because i was so afraid to use it I'm like afraid of technology. So I didn't know any of the settings or anything else. And so, um, yeah, I did nothing with it for like a year, but I finally learned it. I took some classes and I got comfortable with it. So the thing is most people want what, like that blurry background. So right now I'm using a webcam to talk to you and I don't have a blurry background. It just puts everything in focus. In order to get that blurry background, you have to buy a different lens. Now, two things when you buy lenses, I made this huge mistake. Lenses are specific to the camera. So you can't just buy any old lens. You have to know what DSLR camera you have and then you have to confirm that that lens will specifically fit onto that camera that you already own. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I, in fact, I had some lenses I bought and then had to resell uh, on eBay because I was like, oh, this is such a great deal. And I just I didn't I just didn't know. Right. So anyway, so what I have is I have the Canon Rebel T7i as my DSLR. That's usually that's a very affordable camera. They have a Canon. I think it's the M the M50 I had. That was my vlogging camera. That was a really great camera, but that was, uh, I want to say like $500, $600. Um, they also have a Canon, like a professional Canon Mark or something like that. And those are like $2,200. Now, I, in my opinion, unless you are doing professional videos for, say, corporate clients or you are doing photography, there's really no reason to have to upgrade to that level. I think the Rebel line very affordable, works just fine. Um, in fact, my friend Paige, who does professional videos, still uses her Rebel T3i, which obviously is like a gazillion models older, uh, and everything works fine. So now the lens that you want, which is probably the part that you really want to know, Sigma makes the best lenses. So you can get lenses that are made by your camera ma manufacturer, like Canon and Sony, um, Panasonic, I think makes lenses. Don't bother with those, uh, only get Sigma. Um, you know, I think the best ones uh, are just going to be more expensive. So this Sigma lens I have, I think was 700 and the exact one you can find in my kit.co, I think they switched from kit.com, um, the one that I have, and I've had the same Sigma lens for four years now. So it's totally worth it. Uh, it's a good investment. Camera equipment, like I said, doesn't change over that quickly. Like uh, your computer or your phone, you know, when a new camera comes out, yeah, it might be minimally better, but it's not like so amazingly different like the phones and the computers are. Uh, so you shouldn't worry about investing in it, I guess is what I'm saying, and then worrying about it being obsolete in a little bit. So let me just show you the, I have the screenshot so you can see what it looks like. Screen share for kitty. <laughs> I 
Okay, I think you should see a picture in picture. Uh, but over here, let me try to make this bigger. So over here is, I just took a screenshot of what it looks like on my DSLR. So over here, this little red button means it's recording. Um, all of these over here is just Screencast-O-Matic, and that's what I use when I am filming uh, just to get my sound in there. It's totally, I do the sound and the video separate. So over here is your ISO, and I'll be honest, I still have not learned any of these terms, but ISO basically just determines, I think, the amount of light. So 100 gives me a very bright picture, 900 gives me a dark picture. Um, over here is 1.8, that's the f-stop. Now, this is really important. When you buy your lens, you cannot go any lower than the f-stop of the lens that you purchase. So usually when you buy a lens, it will be a 2.1 lens or it'll say 3.5 or something. That's the lowest f-stop that it can go. So if you buy a 3.5 f-stop lens, you're not going to get the blurry background because the number's not low enough. So you want a really low number, like 1.8 or even I think 2.0 will be okay in order to get that blurry background where it just has one thing in focus and puts everything out of focus. How that magically works, I'm not really sure. Again, it has to do with how much light it's letting in. Um, this number over here, the 40, again, I'm not really sure what that's called. I just know on my camera setting that the lower the number is, the more light comes in, the brighter it is. Uh, and then if I go up to like 100 or 190 or 90 or something, then it gets really dark. Uh, so usually whenever I go to film, I never change this 1.8. And again, this is shooting in manual. So if you shoot your camera in automatic, everything will be in focus. So to get the blurry background, you have to have manual. And the hardest part really is just getting yourself in focus if you live alone, uh, cause you're gonna need somebody else to be there. So if you have, I know some people like, I've always thought about buying a stuffed animal, like one of those big panda, like our Winnie the Pooh or something so I could stick him in my chair and try to get stuff in focus. Um, but luckily usually a friend will visit or somebody will be here that I can get it in focus. But I always leave this at 1.8. And then the ISO I change depending on what time of day it is and how much sunlight is coming in. And then the 40 as well, I just changed based on the lighting. So. And sometimes you can fix, uh, you can always fix it, a dark screen to be brighter when you do video editing, but you really can't go backwards to make a bright one darker. So just something to remember if you're gonna have to err on the side of one versus the other. So, all right, let's go back to sharing the workbook. That was a really long way. It's like 1220. I think I've, we've only made it through one thing. I will try to pick up the pace. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one. Equipment and software. So I, um, for the mic, I used to use the Blue Yeti and I still think it's an amazing uh, mic and I think it's only $100. The only problem is that when I was out and about and I was doing video, ex or not video exercises, exercises like fitness, I needed a wireless mic. So I bought the Sennheiser wireless mics. Now, they're really expensive and I had to pay a lot of money to get the settings right. Like, as you can tell, I'm not an expert on camera or video settings. And so same thing with the mic. And so I paid like a thousand dollars for someone to set up all of my mic stuff because everyone's like, I hear feedback or I hear this weird like buzzing or you sound screechy. Uh, so this guy came in and I don't know what he did, but he magically made everything like perfect. Right. And so the problem with the Sennheiser wireless mics is unless you're moving around, I wouldn't get them because one, they require batteries and your batteries are like always dying. I know what you're thinking. I bought those, um, I can't remember, the lithium ion batteries, right? That where you could charge them and put them back in. But you know how lithium ion batteries are? They like are pretty good the first few months to a year. And then afterwards they just can't hold as much charge. Uh, and so now you have a battery that lasts like 20 minutes or something. And you definitely are probably going to be filming for longer than that. So Anyway, so if you can, I would just avoid that. You can do a lapel mic. The shotgun mics on the cameras have never worked for me. I, like the sound isn't very good. Um, I know a lot of people love them. I just could never get them to work. So, you know, I never recommend them just because it didn't work for me. Um, and I, trust me, I tried like probably five or six different shotgun mics because I was like, well, maybe I'm just being cheap, right? Like I bought the Rode and that was only $60. Maybe I should buy this $250 shotgun mic. 
same thing, it didn't work. So I would say right now I have a Newman mic, but remember the Newman mic was, I think $1,200. You definitely do not need a Newman mic. I only bought the Newman mic because I thought I was going to record myself reading books and for the quality that needs to be uploaded to Audible it has to be a much higher caliber than what you can get with the Blue Yeti. And so anyways, long story short, I have a $1,200 mic that I really don't need. It could have just been gotten just fine with a regular mic. My friend Courtney on her channel, I don't know how she has like the same camera I do. Her audio is amazing and she just uses the built-in mic on the DSLR. So it's possible your mic, or maybe if you stand really close to yours, I'm like pretty far away from my DSLR. And I think that's why the sound is just lower. So it's just something to think about. Now I did change this. If you have a, if you aren't going to use the mic that's already built into your DSLR or whatever or your computer, you can record audio separately. So like my friend Camila records audio just with her phone and then it's like right underneath her. So the mic is very close. And then she just syncs it up later. Syncing is crazy easy. It's super, super easy. All you want to do is make sure you make some claps with your hands. Um, so you get those sound spikes when you're trying to sync up the video and audio. Nine times out of 10, your soft video editing software will sync the audio and video together for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but in case they don't, I always do. And honestly, to make it easier for it, I do the clapping so that it doesn't have any time delays in it. So that's the mic tone a little faster. Okay, lighting. Lighting's really important. Natural sunlight. I think we talked about this the other day, uh, last week. It would be great if the sun cooperated and did what you wanted it to do. And even here in Southern California, where it was sunny like pretty much all the time, it's very unreliable. Sometimes it's brighter than other times. And plus the time of day and the lighting, the way it hits your room, all make a huge difference on how you're going to look on camera. So I have box, box lights provide a, sh a softer light. Um, I used to just only use Diva light rings, but they're just a little too harsh. You could take your Diva light ring and put like a white t-shirt or something to like soften and soften, yeah, soften and diffuse that light a little bit more. Um, but you should just really try it out and see what works best for you. And honestly, I've never, I mean, in my life, I've just never worn foundation because I'm just lazy um, and I just don't like how it feels on me. But in case I have like any sort of, I have sun, like a lot of sunspots, I've tried lasering them off. It works like the first time and then the second, third time it doesn't work. But anyways, because of that, my skin does sometimes look a little uneven. And then the brighter the light is though, the more even my skin looks. So it could actually save you some money with makeup as well with the lighting. Um, Let's see, backdrop. So uh, really easy. The only thing I say, you can put anything you want. I just like having shelves. I would love to have, uh, I think Jillian Perkins has like this massive setup where she has like these super pretty like Florida ceiling shelves and she has all these cute knickknacks. However, I just don't uh, have that much space here. And so I just didn't do that. But the only thing I would say is do not use a green screen. I don't think there's anything worse than a green screen. And I know a lot of people get really excited about using those in Zoom calls, but the whole reason people are coming to your channel is kind of to see your personality, where you live, what's going on. Like even if it's messy in the background, it is much more enjoyable to see a real background than to see this weird kind of green screen that sometimes when you move too fast, <laughs> you actually see green or something uh, fuzzy. So that's all I would say. And you know, when I first started out filming, my background was pretty terrible because I had, I was stuck in the dining room. I didn't have an office, Ben had taken the office. So I had a mirror like right next to me. So you would actually in a lot of shots to see the camera or I'd have to strategically place the camera. So I was like in this tiny little corner where like you didn't see the everything because of the mirror. So, you know, <laughs> you can kind of just make it work. And corners work great too, if you are worried about uh, getting too much stuff in the background. All right, let's talk about video and editing software. So iMovie comes free with Apple and I know not everybody has a, a Mac computer, but if I were to start over again, I would use Filmora. So Filmora is a, I think it's like $30, it's not that much, but it has a lot of add-ons that you purchase with it. So when you see those videos where like, it has animation with the text coming up and it has uh, like a cool transition from one scene to the next, 
that's usually Filmora. You can build your own animations in different software like Adobe After Effects, but I can't, I like, I still can't figure out After Effects. And um, yeah, even when I buy pre-made things. So just be cautious that you're not gonna waste a bunch of time learning how to do animated text for something that's like two seconds of your video. However, it does add a lot of value. So Filmora, once you invest though in Filmora, you probably want to stay with Filmora because all of the add-ons you're purchasing can only be used in Filmora. Um, now I used Adobe Premiere because I had Adobe Creative Cloud and that comes free with it. The only problem with Adobe Premiere is, first of all, I loved Adobe Premiere. Like I would still keep using it if it wasn't for this one problem. When you render video in Adobe Premiere, so you you set up your whole video editing, right? Like you cut things off where you're like saying um a lot or just when you're starting out uh, at the beginning of the video and you're like getting set up. So anyways, when you're done with your video and it wasn't even like I had that much complicated video or animations, it would take sometimes like towards the end there, I would start rendering a 10 minute video at like nine o'clock at night. And then maybe like by three or four in the morning, it would be done rendering. <laughs> like it would just take that long versus when I switched over to Final Cut Pro. And again, Final Cut Pro is, I believe, only available for Mac. It, like it was night and day. Like when I go to render a video, it is no joke ready in like three minutes, maybe five minutes. So for that reason alone, I made the switch to Final Cut Pro. Um, Adobe Premiere said they're working on things, but I just, there are so many like bugs and issues that I had in Premiere, I just don't have in Final Cut Pro. So if you're trying to decide between those two, that's what I would do. But again, if I was starting over, I would just use Filmora. But at this point, I bought so many things for Final Cut Pro um, that it just doesn't make sense to switch over. There is another, I want to say it's Galileo or Gideon, something with a G, a new software that's very similar to Filmora. Uh, but, and I think it looks good. So you could check that out as well. But again, what you could do as well is you could just take everything in one take, like I did in the very beginning, and then you don't have to do any video editing because video editing does take up a lot of time. Now, overall, it does cost a little bit of money to get started, but honestly, you could just start with everything that you have and not buy any of this, right? You wouldn't have to buy a camera. You don't have to buy a mic, lighting, backdrops, editing software. You could just do what I did, do everything in one take, send it off and you're good to go. So just something to think about as well. All right, channel theme and style. So let's just talk about what you want to do. So your channel, uh, should have kind of a look and feel to it. Or when you come there, you'll notice some people put a lot of personality into their videos, like, you know, a cute Southern accent. I'm not saying they made one up, but you know, maybe that's kind of their thing. Or they say, howdy y'all. Um, that's my friend Jessica Stansbury. So she says that, and that's just her personality and how she normally talks. So she's not faking it, uh, but she just kind of lets it show through more. Versus if I was going to start a YouTube channel about, HR, it would be very buttoned up, very formal, and possibly very boring. I don't know, but it would then appeal to people who are seeking out that type of information. So think about before you start your channel, because you really want to be consistent all throughout. And I just knew that I wanted to be informal, casual, chatty, fun, talky with people because I was really never allowed to do that. Again, when you're human resources, you're basically the librarian of your company and you don't get to do the fun things. And people don't usually invite you out for like all night ragers. Did I ever do? I don't even know if I would go to an all night ragers. My whole point is I just wasn't invited to the fun stuff or like any of that stuff because nobody wants human resources at that uh, type of event or, you know, included in certain conversations. So that's why I just wanted to be more down to earth and, you know, just be myself. And that's also the reason to um, that I only do HR consulting things with my friend Heather, uh, and she's really the face of the company. And I just do things more on the back end because I don't want to be like the face of the company and of corporate America anymore. So long story short, just kind of decide, check out other channels too and see what they do. You know, a lot of people have like a cute little intro that they do, uh, and that kind of defines their channel. You know, Courtney, who does uh, Cozy Escape, always starts her videos out with, I hope you are having a fabulous and amazing and wonderful day. Or maybe she ends her videos like that. But 
that's just kind of her stick and that's what she says. And that's really indicative of her personality. So little things like that can give your channel a lot of uh, like uniqueness or originality. You want to decide how often you want to post. Now, for one video that I do, and this is why I like doing live streams, honestly, is because live streams require no sort of um, effort or I should say no effort, no preparation, at least in my time on my part. Maybe I have to make some slides, but you know, after, again, after being corporate America, I can make slides in my sleep. So, and also talking, I love just talking and being on camera and chatting with everyone. So for me, live streams are super easy, but when I do videos, I try to make it very succinct and very to the point and get rid of like blah, blah, blah. Like you'll see sometimes I'll be talking and I'll just cut the video off and just jump to the next scene, um, which is called a jump cut when you're editing. And that's because I know people's time is limited and they're watching that video really quick to get some quick tips. So this is how long, and this is after a while. Before this, it took me like probably eight hours just to do like double this time. But for a 10 minute video, it takes me four hours. It takes me an hour to research topics. Uh, it takes me another hour to just record the video because remember, I try to do everything in one take. It makes the editing so much easier. It takes me another hour to edit um, and then another hour to create the thumbnail. And actually, it's probably less because I don't have to do social media posts, but to put the description in there, to add keywords and tags and everything else. So you'll have to, one, determine how long it takes you just to make one video. And then you're, you'll just have to determine how often you want to post based on that. And I know people talk about saving time with batching videos. And yes, it does save some time, but it's still going to take you a bunch of time to do all of these things, especially when you're just starting out. Um, the next one, now what you could do, which uh, honestly, when I first started out, I had my friend Paige, who does professional video editing, um, and I paid her, even though we're friends, I had her do like all the recordings for my video. And then I had her do all the editing because I just couldn't figure it out. And I just wasn't able to put videos out because it was taking so long. So if you're, if you have the budget and the means, I would definitely outsource some of those videos in the beginning so that you can just kind of get up and going. Um, Cause again, you should never let the tech stop you. It's just like I'm redoing Planner Academy 2.0. I really just don't want the design uh, and the, pain of trying to learn a new technology to stop you from creating a planner. So same thing with YouTube. Um, this is like a little channel Mad Lib. So this is exactly what I say every time I have a new video. And the reason I say this is because one, you just never know who's going to find your video and where they're coming from and they might want to know who's there. I think even like Lynn came in late, who are you talking about, right? So she's like, what is going on? So you just never know who's coming into your channel for the first time. So this helps people really quick kind of know who you are, why you're there, and whether or not they should hit subscribe. Because you really want a lot of subscribers uh, and views so that people will know when you have new videos coming up. Now, it takes me maybe, I want to say, five seconds to say this. So it's really quick. It's easy. And honestly, I think most people, if you're watching my chat, you probably don't even hear it anymore, right? Like, hi, my name's Lisa. You're just like, whatever. That's just the intro part, right? Don't make it too long. I've seen people do, when I first started out, I had paid someone on Fiverr to make this really cute intro for me. Um, and Paige made a really cute intro for me where I'm like doing karate chops and, and like, uh, working out that I'm writing like it looks cute but it takes up a lot of time and it doesn't add any value and quite honestly it was confusing because I was talking about InDesign tutorials yet I'm doing all these random things just to kind of show my personality so those are really great intros if you have a lifestyle channel which I did not. Um, and you are, people are there just because they want to look at you and see you and learn more about your life. And if that is not the case, and even if that is the case, that's kind of like, I don't want to say old, like nobody's really doing those video intros anymore. Uh, so just forget about it and just go ahead and just jump right into your content when you're making videos. So uh, okay, what is and isn't okay? So this is just really me being like a I don't know, like a big sister kind of advice, but I don't think you should ever, ever like use YouTube. And we talked about this last week too, to trash talk companies or to use it as a complaining venting platform, which I think Twitter is pretty much, that's why it exists. Um, but 
that's not what you want to do on YouTube, especially when your face is there and you're associated with it. Now, I'm not saying you should lie. I definitely am super honest when I do product reviews that I feel were just not up to snuff or I feel kind of cheated, um, but I don't really like go on and on trashing them. Try to be objective, even when you're being honest and giving critical feedback, I guess. Um, what should you always do on YouTube? I think you should always try to stay upbeat and positive. No one's really coming to, I shouldn't say, I mean, people go to YouTube for many different reasons, but if you have a planner channel or a planner design channel, no one's really coming there to, you know, just listen to someone go on and on about how awful their life is and how depressed they are, right? So that is, and I know we all have different things going on, but again, unless you're a lifestyle channel, which is very different, um, I would try to curtail some of that and stick to the main subject of what your channel is. Now, I do personal updates all the time. Um, I should say all the time, but like everyone's like three or four a year, right? And so then I share personal stuff. And, but for the most part, most of my channel is just what you came there for. And I try to make those really obvious that those are personal videos, especially when we do the plan with me at the end of the month and I share personal stuff. So, you know, definitely share personal things, but maybe a little later on in your YouTube relationship with your viewers after you guys have like got to know each other a little better. Um, where to find video ideas? Okay, so this is probably the hardest part when you're starting out. You're going to just pretend you're a blogger. Right. So when you're doing blog topics for your website, you're trying to think of things that will get traffic to come in things that people are interested in. Um, you're gonna look at all of your competitors, like subscribe to everybody. I think I have 732 uh, channel subscriptions on uh, on my YouTube channel, because well, one, I just genuinely like YouTube, but you wanna check and see what people are doing and what people like. Um, you want to always say hello and introduce yourself in the comments. I'm actually pretty bad about this. Uh, who's really good? There are other channels that are really good about this, and they always have, like, one of the best practices is to do a question of the day at the end of your videos. I am terrible at doing that, um, but that's one thing that you should do. Uh, make a list of things you like and don't like about other people's videos and their topics, right? So I don't like spilling the tea, right? I feel like that's just kind of petty and silly. And yes, those videos do get a lot of views, but that's not really something I want to be known for. And also not even something I'm excited to talk about. It's not like I'm dying to talk about like trashing somebody else and I just can't do it because I think it's wrong. I just have no interest in it. So you might want to think about that too. Like when I think about plan with me videos where you're putting stickers down or you're drawing something, that's also something that I have no talent for and have no interest in creating, right? So you've never seen me do one of those videos. So just make a list and make sure that, you know, all of the videos you're doing, just because things are getting higher views, if it's not really authentic to something you enjoy talking about or doing, then I would say just skip it. All right, standard planner review channel video. So we went through this last week, so I won't do it again, but just add some standard. This is just a place for you to add some ideas of things that you found as you went through. And that's it for all of this stuff. But let me share, um, let me share something else. Can I share an application window? Maybe. Nope, that's not the one I want to share. I think this is the one I want to share. Yes, so I went in and I did an incognito tab. So a couple of things when you're starting out your YouTube channel. One, you do need a Gmail account. Well, I shouldn't say that. You need a Google account. So you could take your regular email like Lisa at lisaseifert.com, sign up for Google Office or whatever, and then you kind of have a Google account. I don't know how true that is. I just know it's much easier when you have a Gmail account to start your YouTube channel. So I started one for the cat. My cat is named Lucky. So over here we have Lucky's Gmail account. Um, and so over here at the top right, you're going to log in as Lucky. So I can sign out of this when you go. So you're just gonna go to youtube.com and you're gonna click sign in. And here we go. Here's Lucky. And we're just going to log in as lucky. So now at the top right, I'm lucky. So you'll notice a lot of times um, 
you know, when you if you share a computer with your spouse or your children or something, whoever was watching YouTube last uh, based on their behavior. So this is a brand new channel. So these are all just random suggestions. But based on the browsing history and watch history of whoever is logged into YouTube, that's what's going to determine what videos come up as suggestions. Same thing over here, uh, subscriptions. You can see I'm not subscribed to anything. So maybe Lucky obviously wants to subscribe to my channel, right? So you can just look things up. We can hit subscribe over here. Um, and then based on things that Lucky is subscribed to or things he's watching, it's going to change that behavior. Now, in order to start a channel, all Lucky has to do is go up here to the top right and say create a channel um, and say get started. So obviously, I'm just going to do so a couple things. You could start it as your name. So or you can start it with a custom name, right? So let's say we want to do a custom name. So add, add a channel name, Lucky the Abyssinian Kitty. The ruddy Abyssinian. So he has a really long channel name. And the reason I did that is hopefully nobody else has that channel name. So if someone else does, it's going to kick back an error message. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to get okay. Yep. Our channel has been created. So we can upload a picture here um, instead of the L. I don't think I have any lucky pictures ready to go, but you can just upload that later. Tell viewers about your channel. So this is where people are going to automatically see the description when they go to the about section. So Lucky loves to post fun videos of him playing with string, catnip, and giving high fives for kitty treats. So that's right. So, and then you can also post too. Lucky posts new videos or sometimes you could just say I, but <laughs> since this is a cat channel, Lucky posts new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right. So you could add that. You could add more things. You can even put hashtags in here. So Abyssinian cat, um, cat mom, cat life. I think three is the max that YouTube will recognize. And then after that, it just ignores them. So you could put all of this in here. So now if Lucky has a website, you can also add this. Lucky does not have a website. So, um, but we can just go ahead and link Lucky to uh, Lisa Seifert. Lisa Seifert.com. Uh, Facebook, again, Lucky doesn't have a profile. You could put all of this in here and it will all automatically, magically show up um, on your channel. So we're going to save and continue. And also here you saw it said set up later. All right, so here's the channel. There are no videos on it, but if we go to the about section, we can see what we just did. So it said Lucky loves to post fun videos of him playing with string, catnip, and giving high fives for kitty treats. Lucky posts new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And then you'll see over here, we can go to Lucky's website, which is just me, lisaseifert.com, or we can go to Lucky's Instagram, which is also just my Instagram. But this way, people can connect with you. Also, when you go here to home, um, you're going to see it as well. Someone's looking at your channel. So if we go to, I think, over here, view your channel. Nope, I think because we have no content there yet. Um, so let's go over here. The next thing you're going to want to do is customize your channel. So this is just telling you about YouTube Classic, which doesn't matter because obviously you weren't using YouTube before, so you don't need it. So over here for layout, channel trailer. So a channel trailer just means it's usually a one or two minute video. So there's a channel trailer on my channel. Um, let's see, let's go to my channel. It should be over here in subscriptions. I don't know why it's not. Huh. All right. So pretty fabulous. Did you see that? It didn't keep the subscribe. Okay. So the channel trailer, oh, well, that's interesting. So my channel trailer is old. See about. Oh, 
All right, I swear it is somewhere. Oh, I think it's called Welcome. Welcome to my channel. Or maybe it's not. I must use the word welcome a lot. Anyway, so it's usually just two minutes um, and or less, right? So it's really quick for people who are like, what is this channel about? It will show up right when, or it should show up right when you go to the channel. Um, so when you go over here to add, it's just gonna let you upload that video really quick. Um, and then over here, a featured video for returning subscribers. So in theory, once people are subscribed already, they don't need to watch your channel trailer, they would watch another video. Um, I was wrong, this isn't where you upload it. This is just where you have a list of your videos already and then you select which one you want it to be. So that's for people who are returning and maybe you have a video that has a really great lead magnet and then people will end up subscribing to your channel. So that's what you wanna do for there. Over here where it says upload, so you can add different sections to your channel. So if we go back here to this channel, you'll see I have uploads, then I have um, DIY, make a planner. And honestly, maybe it's because I'm live and that's why it's just not showing up um, my other videos, but my welcome video. Uh, and then I have DIY, make a planner. So these are all playlists and these are all horizontal. You can change this so that they're vertical as well. And then I have more channels down here at the bottom. So if we go over back to where we're doing our customizations, we could add a section where we have popular uploads, short videos, lives, past live streams, playlists. So what I have over on my channel are all single playlists. That's what I added. Obviously, we don't have any material here to add, but once you do, you can start adding it. Um, and then you could add subscriptions and featured channels. So you can see over here, I don't have my subscriptions, I just have featured channels. And instead of calling it featured channels, I just called it more awesomeness. Um, and those are just usually your friends or channels that are related to you that you wanna promote. So here's the thing too, I think a lot of people don't do featured channels because they're afraid of the competition. And that's not really how YouTube works, right? It's just like TV. Just because you watch TV shows on NBC doesn't mean you're not gonna watch ABC or Fox or the CW. And honestly, nowadays, I don't even know if people know what channels they're watching because everyone's streaming everything. So for that reason, you just want to be more of a resource to people. Uh, same thing with videos, when you can add cards that link to other videos, there's nothing wrong to linking to people who are not you on their channels, who you aren't even friends with just because it's related. So uh, doing that too just makes, I think, I, I mean, I don't know the background behind the YouTube algorithm, but I believe it makes your channel seem more resource user friendly. If people are clicking things that you provide, like those YouTube cards, even if it's to other channels and other videos, your video is seen as more useful, if that makes sense. Okay, so here we are back at branding. So your profile picture, again, you can upload anything you want, a uh, banner image. Um, now this, I should say this too, your profile picture, if I had chosen, I chose a brand uh, channel versus on the left, remember I could have just said, leave it as lucky, uh, Seifert. If I had done that, it would have just taken the picture that I already had set up inside of Gmail. Um, over here, banner image, that's that top image at the top. Don't worry about these pixels. They're actually totally wrong. Like, I don't even know why they tell you pixels. Um, I'll show you in a minute. But basically, whatever you have for channel art versus like what you see is like night and day, especially once you watch it on a TV. Uh, a lot of people have smart TVs and watch YouTube that way versus a phone versus an iPad uh, versus watch, watching it on their desktop. So if you're going to make a banner image, which you definitely should, I would just use Canva. But don't put too much effort into this because banner images, like no one really goes to a channel to watch videos. Mostly people just watch videos in their stream. So they're probably nine times out of 10, nobody is going to see this banner image. So I would spend like the least amount of effort on this. This is a video watermark that you can add at the bottom right, like branding to every video. I find these obnoxious. I actually really strongly dislike them. Um, you can definitely add it to your video, but the chance of anyone stealing your video is really low. Like I get probably four or five copyright violations a year. Like YouTube catches it. Like I'm not out there policing it and no one tells me about it. YouTube just knows that it's the same video. I don't know how it does. Um, so 
if someone does that, it's really easy to just get them to take it down. So for me, adding that watermark just is like kind of obnoxious because then people have to see that watermark 24 seven. And sometimes, especially because I do tutorials, it can be distracting, especially if I'm trying to point to a menu or panel inside the application. So my advice would be just to skip it. So this is what we already did. We did uh, the channel description. You can change this at any time with this little pen tool here to edit. Um, add a language. Obviously, if you are, are a, let's say, a Polish channel and everything's in Polish, you might want to change that. Now, the channel URL, you're going to need at least 100 subscribers before you can have a vanity URL. So like right now, if you go to Pretty Fabulous Designs, it looks like this, youtube.com slash Pretty Fabulous Designs, right? But prior to that, it just looked like this where it's just a bunch of letters, right? So getting to 100 is pretty easy. And once you do, it will unlock that feature. Uh, here's those links that we just did and links on banner. So over here, you could do first link. So on the banner, we're just talking about the bottom right. So when you go to the channel, these are the links over here that you can add. All right, I think that's it. Um, oh, let people know how to contact you. You can put whatever uh, information you want inside of there. So over here, when you go to the about section for business inquiries, I don't know why it like always hides it. You have to say view email and you have to confirm your, oh, you have to do this whole captcha. I'm never good at these things. Is that a traffic light? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I clear, I, I totally did it wrong. Is that a bicycle? I think that's the only bicycle that looks like a motorcycle. There we go. So now I submitted it. So now I can finally see that person's email address. Um, well, my own email address, that person's. All right, so that's all of the things that you need to do. So over here, this dashboard, say okay. Um, this is where you're gonna upload videos and this is just kind of general YouTube information. It looks a little confusing. You can ignore all of this. This is just if you wanna kind of explore and look around. Over here, um, channel content. If you had videos uploaded, they would show up here. These are your playlists. Again, you can create a playlist without actually having any videos yet, like a playlist that you're going to add to later. So maybe this is called um, favorite, whoops, favorite the toys. Right. And then you can choose whether it's public, private, or enlisted. Now, really important, when you upload videos ahead of time, and let's say you want to not show it till a certain day, if you upload a video and it goes to a uh, playlist, sometimes people, people can still find it if it's unlisted. So just something to think about. If this is a private playlist, then nobody who visits your site will see it unless you specifically gave that user ID access. Um, I actually have never used the private feature just because it's so cumbersome to add a bunch of people, but sometimes people in the early days used to run courses like that. Um, or maybe you just have a private video because you're not sure when you want to make it public. You could do that as well. So we could create that, that one list, right? And so you can see the three dots because there's no videos inside of there yet. Analytics. So there's not a lot of analytics to look at yet, but once you do have some analytics, you can see all of them inside of here. Um, all of the comments that you get on your channels will all be held here in one spot. Now, this one over here where it says held for review, that's just where people write crazy town things like YouTube just kind of knows, especially if there's curse words or like uh, something sexual. They usually go here and held for review, um, especially anything with a URL so that you can approve it if you want that comment to show up. Subtitles, this is if you want to upload your own subtitle file to your YouTube channel. It's a little more advanced, uh, so we're not gonna go over that today. Copyright, this again, you don't have to worry about that. What comes into here are two things. One, if YouTube thinks that someone has stolen one of your, vid your videos, it'll show up here and they'll send you an email. And then you can just respond to it. Yes, this is mine, please ask them to take it down. or the flip side, it could be someone who said you have stolen their content and then you'll see that here too and you can respond and say, I don't know what you're talking about or we agreed or I bought this or something else. Usually what happens for me the majority of time when people say I've stolen their content, it is because I've used music that I have purchased online. And so when you buy stuff from Envato or Canyon Code or anything like that, it is for a single use only. 
So what happens is if you have the ending credits, like at the end of my video, if it goes on longer than say 10 seconds and it goes on for, let's say 20 seconds, then it triggers a copyright violation for some reason. And so, um, you know, just be really careful about the music that you use that one, it's okay to use it on multiple videos. And two, that you're only using, I think the rule now is six seconds. You can use copyrighted music, but as long as it's not more than that, then it's okay think. But again, I would be careful because there was, I had a YouTube, I don't know if anyone remembers this, like three years ago when we lived at our old place and I had that office in the dining room. And because it was in the dining room, Ben had like two TVs going on, right? Like the two, I can't describe the layout, but basically it's like, it was just living in one big studio with some doors. That's what I always consider one floor apartments. And so because there's no door on the dining room, Ben was in the TV room, which also had no doors and he was watching sports and it was really loud. And he's like, I don't know why guys let's just like watching things really loud. And it was a Beyonce a song on a commercial, right? It was like a football game. So it had a Beyonce song and it, you can barely hear it in the background while I was like talking and sharing all my, you know, fantastic knowledge. And I got a YouTube copyright for copywriting Beyonce's song. So, you know, just be really careful about background noise as well, because you can like I could barely hear that. But somehow YouTube picked that up and I got a violation and it just happened to be on top of two other violations. Um, again, like just random stuff. And so I was banned from uploading any videos for three months. <laughs> so there's no way around it. So you want to be really careful on that. All right, last tab, few tabs, monetization. We talked about this already. Obviously this channel is not eligible for monetization. You need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. Make sure to sign up for a Google AdSense account now. Um, we already saw this, the channel customization. And then this is your audio library. I 100% ignore the audio library. This is supposedly free music. It sounds awful. <laughs> like all of the free music is just terrible. Um, over here we have sound effects. I also don't use any of these either. Um, just, I mean, they're free, but I'm always worried. Like, obviously, I'm just paranoid about sound now. So there's pretty much never any sound in any of my videos anymore. In fact, I don't even do when I do those co-working videos where we're doing that. Um, what do you call it? Work with me virtual co-working. I don't even bother with uh, trying to put music on in the background because I always end up getting dinged for that. So <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of everything I wanted to share with you today. Do you guys have questions? Uh, Vanessa, the gym swag shop. What are your thoughts on orbits? Would that be too difficult as a newbie? I'll be honest, Vanessa. I don't know what you mean by orbits. Um, orbits. I'm thinking of space. <laughs> so if you want to clarify, I can definitely answer that. Um, is it too difficult? It's too difficult for me to uh, think about. So I'm not even sure what that is. But all right. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Don't forget, we have two more live streams. So in December, so today is the 15th. Tomorrow, I'm actually doing two live streams. If you guys are interested, I will see how this works. I'm doing a live stream on my Lisa Latte channel, the booktube channel with Lucky, my cat, because he stars in all of my books. And so I'm gonna teach everyone how to do a high five with your cat. And so that will be tomorrow at one o'clock. We'll see if the cat cooperates. Uh, and then at five o'clock, these are all Pacific Standard Times, uh, Courtney and I will be going live on that same channel, Lisa Latte, and talking about kneaded to death, which kneaded is spelled K-N-E-A-D, like bread. So it's a cozy mystery book club discussion. Anyways, if you want to join, you don't even have to read the um, book because we just tell you about it beforehand. And we're doing two cozy mystery book giveaways for tomorrow. You do have to live in the U.S., though because I think shipping overseas was just too much um, for the authors to do. So as long as you live in the U.S., you'll get the book. I, honestly, if you live international, we'll just send you the ebook, So you'll get it free one of two ways. Um, and then, okay, so for this channel, though, the next live stream is next Tuesday, December 22nd, and that is going to be how to create a course, because I just love talking about courses. 
that will be all slides and there will be a workbook. Then the Tuesday after that on the 29th, and again, I don't even have a course on how to create a course that makes a course on how to create a course. So again, it's a, just another no sell webinar just to help you guys and give you information. I honestly think the number one way that you could really maximize the sale of your planner is creating a course that goes with it. So let's say you have a course on, I don't know, productivity, right? Or you have a course on self-confidence or gratitude or whatever your planner happens to be about or your target audience, you can add a course and that will really just sort of be a benefit to people buying your planner or just maybe another revenue stream for you. What was my point? Okay, so the December 22nd, we're going to talk about a course. And then after that, on the 29th, because I do, I still like Thinkific, even though I don't use it anymore. So I'm going to show you on the back end, just like today, how to set up your Thinkific account, how to upload information, how to do branding, all that other stuff. And then on right after that, I think they both happen that day, or I don't know if I schedule it for a different day. I will show you how to set up Podia, because that's what I use currently. Uh, and I'll show you how to get going on that platform as well. Because sometimes like the tech is just the hardest part. And when you do those tutorials, they're like so excited to show you all the bells and whistles in their programs that you just kind of like your eyes glaze over and you're bored. It's possible watching and talking, listening to me talk right now, your eyes are glazing over and you're bored. I don't know. Um, oh, Tammy, uh, totally off topic for questions regarding Planner Academy 1.0. How can I contact you? You, if you're in Planner Academy, you can just text me. I think I put my phone number up there. Um, or you can just send me an email to lisa at prettyfabulousdesigns.com. And Ahaya Records, LLC, how did you add the graphic in the corner on a live? Oh, so I'm using StreamYard. So on StreamYard, uh, are you talking about this graphic right here where it says fudge and felonies, Lisa Siebert? So in StreamYard, you have the option to do a, I don't know if I can share the street, StreamYard screen. Let me see if I can do that. Share screen. All right, so inside StreamYard over here at the right, I don't know if you guys can see that, you have banners. Um, oh, it's not gonna let me do it because I'm inside a video. Um, you have brand. Oh, here, I think it kind of lets you do that. Uh, so over here for brand, where it says StreamYard overlap, all I did was upload an overlay. So I uploaded a PNG file, which means everything in here is transparent except my little cover and then my name. So I actually created that. Uh, if I didn't use that and I used, whoops, and I used the default, then it would have just said Lisa Seifert on the bottom, which you see a lot when people do uh, stream yards. So I hope that helps. There's a private chat. I've actually never used that setting. Banner. I guess I could upload a banner. I don't even know where the banner would go. Oh, there it is. That's the banner at the, begin at the bottom if you want to show a banner. Okay, clearly I have not used all of the features inside of StreamYard, but that's how you do it. And a last note about live streaming, I always use my, like right now I'm using the Logitech 4K um, Brio, which I think is perfect. I used to try to use my HDMI, I know my HDMI, my um, DSLR. I do have a box which does, um, I don't want to say magic, but it just allows whatever I was on the DSLR to show up on the screen. So you could have that fuzzy background. There are two problems with that. One, the camera I have, the Canon uh, Rebel T7i automatically times out after 20 minutes. So obviously I talk a lot during live streams. Like I said, I like doing live streams. They're easy, they're fun. And I definitely talk more than 20 minutes. Even when I plan to talk for five minutes, it goes on for like 20 hours. So it doesn't work for that reason. And then the second reason I don't have, Canon is not able to provide what's called a clean HDMI. So if you remember, um, let me go ahead and add this. This picture right here, uh, if you can see this, this is what it looks like when I do uh, live streaming. I get that the time at the top, I have the 40, the 1.8, the ISO. Sometimes I have tried to, uh, what do you call it? I've tried to hide it. Like if you push info on the Canon, sometimes it will hide that information, but for the most part, you're usually stuck with all of that information on the camera. So that is an issue. All right. 
think. Let's go back to comments. Uh, Tammy, um, ah, I'll check. I'll go in search of your number. Thanks. Uh, higher records. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Also with StreamYard, you can show things. Sometimes if I forget to push the button, you can't show things because no one can see it if I forget to push the button. And yeah, I think that's it. I did have a couple questions come in through email that I haven't answered. So really quick, someone asked me if they can change the cover on the planners. You can always change all of the covers on every planner. Pretty much every planner that I've made this year uh, and even the updates that I've done for older planners, there's a video on how to edit them. Uh, it's always a live stream. So if you look online, you just do a search on the channel, you're going to find that video. A second question came in on when will Planner Academy 2.0 launch? It should have launched, let's be real, back in September. Um, everything is ready to go. I just haven't put it out there. Uh, so maybe, when will I do that? When will I, I don't know. I'm just having like a really difficult month um, just from all the legal things last year. And I just, I don't know what the problem, I think because I have like so many things to do. Like every day it's like a snowball effect. I have more and more things to do and then I just don't do them. And then the list just gets bigger and it just gets more intimidating. And yeah. So that's what's happening. But I, everything's ready to go. So in theory, I could throw it together next week. Um, I have a five-day challenge already planned out for digital planners. Um, so that was actually just going to be in the course. I think I'll just do that live, possibly next week. Uh, and then at the end of the week, you can enroll in Planner Academy 2.0, which honestly, I'll be uploading things as we go. So that'll probably kick off right after Christmas. I know it's really soon. Like it'll kick off. You know how I like to just do things for sale during the holidays. I don't know why. Um, it'll probably kick off on Monday the 28th. Yeah. So I know it what a random time, but it's better. Like I say, it's better late than never, right? So that's when that's kicking off. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have. The only thing I will say is if you were in planner one Academy 1.0, oh yeah, that's Vanessa, you were reading my mind. If I have Planner Academy 1.0, do I get access to 2.0? Yes, 100%. I never make you buy anything else. However, I do want to say there was a difference between Planner Academy and Boss School. So Planner Academy um, cost half as much as Boss School, and Boss School went away. So what's going to happen is in Planner Academy 2.0, if you were just in Planner Academy and you did not upgrade to Boss School or you didn't add it on later, then you will not get access to the membership forum, right? I think I talked about this last time when I was talking, or in one of my videos when I was talking about course platforms, I just purchased Mighty Networks. I have not really fully utilized it yet, but if you are in uh, Boss School, you will automatically be added to Mighty Networks. If you are not, and you just had Planner Academy 1.0, then you will still get access to all of Planner Academy 2.0, but you won't get any of that interactive feedback or chats or you know discussions or new trainings. That's only for people that purchase Boss School because I feel like they had purchased, right? They paid double, they had an upgrade. Um, so I just like to keep them elevated at that new level. If you would like to upgrade to that, you can still do so uh, and you'll get access to all of the past Boss School things as well. So if you are in Planner Academy 1.0, do not worry. There will be an information session just for you to talk about the differences. And again, honestly, the only reason I haven't done it is because I really like looking at things visually and I just haven't put together a chart or anything for you to show the difference between the two. Um, Ahaya, when using InDesign, are you aware of whether or not you can adjust video size so that it can be added but not bulky? So... I actually have never added video to Adobe InDesign, creating interactive InDesign uh, PDFs or PDFs using Adobe InDesign is something totally outside my scope. Um, so I actually don't know the answer to that. <laughs> uh, unless you meant a different software. Do you mean like for the editing software maybe or to YouTube, is that what you meant? Vanessa, the gym swag bag. I just like saying the gym swag bag. This is excellent marketing. I really like what Vanessa has done. We should all be doing this. Um, okay, uh, great. I had Planner Academy 1.0 and Bosco Bundle. Perfect. Then you're all in for everything. Um, Tammy, woohoo, can't wait for the 28th. I had the full bundle too. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited.
excited. I, cause I don't do social media, but anymore, as you know, but I love doing YouTube and I do like interacting with people who have already purchased Planner Academy, not because they paid for it, but because they already know everything going on and they're actually very focused. So I think the discussions inside there will be much more, much more richer. That's not even grammatically correct, but much more useful to everybody going forward so that they can ask questions. Cause I really just don't like Facebook um, for Facebook groups. I feel like it's just crazy anarchy. I feel like Facebook could take it away at any time. Um, and I don't know that everyone wants to be on Facebook, right? Like I think there's a lot of mental health issues right now going on where people are actively leaving social media for that. So plus I like Mighty Networks because I'm, I think I'm in three different networks right now, like actual paid networks. And it's very focused on like that particular topic versus like everything in the world. Cause I feel like sometimes when you're on Facebook, you have like this pressure to just post random things to just get engagement and interaction. Um, versus if it's like a paid group where people are there for one specific reason. Yeah, that's my rationale. Plus, I just really like Money Networks. I think uh, it's a really great tool. And you can use it on your phone. So just to be clear, though, I believe all the course material, material will still stay on Podia because there's a self-study people and because it just would be too hard to maintain two platforms. Um, the only thing that won't be on there is the boss school material. We'll all be moving over to Mighty Networks, like the archive material, because obviously everyone on Mighty Networks will be there, as well as any new interviews and new things that we do going forward. And also Caitlin, um, who is my friend, who is the e-commerce like expert go-to person, and she likes making crafts and doing, she's just like very hands-on. She will be on Mighty Networks too. So she will be there to answer any questions that you guys have and checking that. I don't want to say every day, like being more realistically, like she'll be checking it at least every week. So yeah. All right. I think I have blabbed enough. Do you guys feel like I've talked enough? I will see you guys on Thursday. Have a video just so you know on Target how to get into Target, how to get into retailers. Uh, and I did a small little Target haul of some planners I want to show you. And yeah, and then next Monday, I'll be honest, I have no videos planned yet and haven't recorded anything. So I don't know what's going on Monday, um, but I should probably have time to do that, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's the plan. All right, guys, I hope everyone